so with us, you know, we have 9 million viewers right now in our dispensaries. When you aggregate the traffic that goes into them every day, that's a guaranteed exposure rate for those channels. Uh, it's not like somebody has to select like you would in a traditional over the top. We're actually programming and pushing the content. From MJ Bulls Media, it's the Raising Cannabis Capital Show. Today we're continuing our Raising Cannabis Capital series with Danny Keith, CEO of Cannabis Club TV. Danny, thanks for being on the MJ Bulls podcast. Man, thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity. Well, I was really excited when you reached out to me because I listened to you a few months ago on another podcast, Casually Baked, and I'm like... Good old, good old Joanna. <laughs> oh, she, you guys killed it on that show, but I was thinking to myself, this guy is so ahead of the curve right now. I got to talk to him. And then... No, I appreciate that. I, you know, we saw your guys' stuff and we, we felt like we had a story to tell and, you know, that's what we want to do. Well, let's jump right into it. Cannabis Club TV, really cool idea. Tell our listeners about it. Bring us up to speed a little bit about what you're doing. Absolutely. Just like any other over-the-top play, we are a cannabis-centric television network. We broadcast a little over 50 different channels of content into 14 different states and almost 200 locations. With the main device being to help educate the consumer, to help build brands, and to help lift sales for the dispensaries, all while packaging cannabis-related content for the, for the customers to enjoy. Yeah. You're in dispensaries in like 14 states. How does that work? Is it like a closed-circuit TV that or a network that goes into each one of these dispensaries? Well, just not unlike a Fire Stick or Roku, we have a device that we ship out to the location. And once that device is connected to the internet, then we control that via a desktop application. It allows us to ma monitor and manage our health and network. So the real big kicker is that it's no cost to the location. And on top of that, we manage everything. So the device turns on when the dispensary opens. It turns off when they close. We program all the content for them. We've built in a remote control into the cell phone so that they can control their channel choice if they so desire. Or we'll launch to our newest channels as we get evergreen content. It's really meant to help monetize or help activate the walls while these people are standing, which a lot of them are kind of curious and don't have exposure to your high times or your other mechanisms by which they would learn more about the cannabis space. So we're talking to the, a group of people that are somewhat undereducated around cannabis and how they can consume. And yeah, it's a real yeah. easy network for us to set up and run. So you provide the television to go right in the dispensaries and all the mechanical and all the hookup and everything is taken care of. They don't have to do anything. They, they... I mean, just like your Comcast or Time Warner, we come out, we set an installation date. There's a little process. We customize every location to their branding. So every broadcast inside of a dispensary is branded with the dispensary's logoing and everything else. And then we set the install, we do the install. And then from that point on, as long as they don't turn off the device, we manage everything for them. And We've had some great testimonials of people as far as like how it's helped them to sell brands, break new brands. Look, we're in a space right now where the kings and queens of brands have not been created. So we get the rare opportunity to help do that. Yeah. Well, I just saw 51 channels, 51 channels. How do you manage to get the content to fill up 51 channels? Well, you know, we are in an alternative space, so there's not a lot of mechanisms or delivery opportunities for this content so that they can monetize. YouTube most recently did a, a big scrape about eight months ago where they kicked off a bunch of cannabis related content. A lot of those people weren't making money off YouTube, but they were making money off the exposure that YouTube provided via inline marketing, product promotions, brought to you buys, bumpers, however you want to claim it. So with us, you know, we have 9 million viewers right now in our dispensaries. When you aggregate the traffic that goes into them every day, that's a guaranteed exposure rate for those channels. Uh, it's not like somebody has to select like you would in a traditional over the top. We're actually programming and pushing the content. This allowed a lot of these cannabis content manufacturers the opportunity to leg over and not lose their exposure that they were getting through a YouTube or a Vimeo or other areas. And when you really look at it, there's not a lot of areas that you can upload and manage content and create your own network, if you will. And so when YouTube started regulating that, the people came to us. So we do Civilized, Mary Jane, Super Deluxe, Stink City. So we got some pretty heavy hitters, Can of Cribs. Oh, I'd um, say so that, those are big, yes. those are big names. And the best part about it is that you're not producing the content. Other people are producing the content. You're really just 
a way for the content to get out to the public, which that's just brilliant. We're, we're like a combination of a, of a studio slash Comcast. So like NBC Comcast, you know, where we can curate and produce our own content if we want. But really what we do is provide channels for all those people. So Civilized has their own channel. Mary Jane, they have channels actually because wow. they have multiple verticals. Of, and we break it across 14 different categories, entertainment, education, cooking, how to grow, medicinal. Like we, we break it all out and we allow those people to monetize their inline channels. Whatever they want to do once the content's given to us, we don't have a preference on. We monetize with interstitial ads in between their play. They do their money making, we do our money making, and every, everybody gets across the finish line. Yeah, and I think I read on your website that in addition to the dispensaries, you also have an opportunity for people to go, they can post this stuff right on your website. Is Absolutely. It? So our, our model has always been from the couch to the pocket. So we have a mobile app that we play content through and we run that with completely ad free just so we can really generate the users. And on our website, we own our own CDN and CMS delivery. So it's like people can have their content hosted on our website for viewing at no cost. They monetize in line. We monetize around them. So we don't have to worry about dipping in each other's pockets too much. I see. And then the in, the in dispensary play is kind of the same thing. We are in discussions to move into the home. But it's a little more tricky. You don't, you're not guaranteed anybody to watch your content once they're in the home. So our goal is to really build a robust ecosphere in dispensary, mobile, and web so that when we transfer into the home play, we can bring some of those viewers with us at that time. And then on your website, you also have a marketplace. So if people wanted to put their products on your website... Yeah, a lot of brands don't build good websites, don't have the capability of getting credit card processing and really lack a distribution model. And I took a page, you know, out of my previous life, which was I was in action sports and I had skateboards.com and we did drop shipping for over 200 different brands because they just couldn't do it. And so I just took that same mentality to the cannabis space. And, you know, we have about 400 products, about 30 different brands on there. And we ship products, we're shipping probably 10 to 20 products a day out. We want to be the expert in the space when people want to find great content. We're going to be launching a podcast page where we put all the different cannabis content podcasts on them so that when people want to learn, we want to satisfy that kind of curious person's desire to consume content. Well, there's certainly a lot of interest out there. I can I can vouch for that. Now, moving forward over, say, the next 12 months, what are some of the things that you need to get done over the next 12 months to get where you need to be? So, you know, we're growing pretty quick. We just completed friends and family round. I'm a big fan of developing the product and getting to revenue before we go for a big raise. And so we're looking probably in the next two months, I'd say mid Q2, to go for our Series A, where we'll look to raise minimum a million up to five million. And we're looking for that to be led by one to two people. Okay. Friends and family have really helped us get to where we're at. And now we've, we're generating solid five, if not almost six figures worth of revenue on an annual basis. And now we need to expand the footprint. Most recently, you know, distribution platform is in cannabis, but we've just expanded into hydro and head shops on either side of that. So we have a KPI that drives us. We've shown six months of steady growth over budget. And, you know, what we're going to do for the next two months is tighten up our belts, get everything in the line, and then we'll start going to pitch um, okay. for our Series A. Well, I, I know a lot of a lot of investors will find this interesting because you're not a startup. I mean, you say you have nine million, over nine million monthly visitors, and you're in four, right. you're in fourteen states already. I mean, this this is a full blown business. You're you're on the fast track right now, and to set up a dispensary, or if you want to roll into into head shops or there's an upfront investment every time you open up a new facility there's there's absolutely and we've gotten really good about trying to kind of keep our standardization of cost but we get our money back within two to three months on a location so as long as we're not going too elaborate we're making the investment we're getting it back and we're retention rate on advertisers is good our retention rate on dispensaries is good and really it is it's really the airbnb model right do all the manual steps you need to do before you automate make sure you're delivering not a five star, not a six star, but an eleven star service, and you can't go wrong. Yeah. Well, we've been speaking with Danny Keith, CEO of Cannabis Club TV, and I'll have all of their information on the MJ Bulls website, including how you can reach out to Danny if you're interested in participating in their next capital raise. Danny, it was really great to finally meet you. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to come talk to us. Absolutely, man. You know what? I don't think this is the last time we're going to be talking. So uh, I, I hope you have a great weekend. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure we'll be talking again. I look forward to that. Me- meeting you in person, too. 
So good luck. Thank you.